What's up, guys? Welcome to the final drive presented by Microsoft Surface. Chargers lose 27-17 to the Buffalo Bills. Here with Haley Elwood. Bulls dropped to three and eight. Haley, uh, a lot of things went wrong today, um, and you saw the result. Lose by 10 to the Bills, and this is a team coming off a bye, a playoff caliber team, probably going to win the AFC East. You had to play your best ball, and unfortunately the Chargers just did not. Yeah, it was a tough one. It was a tough one today. And, and I think Joey Bosa said it best after the game where he said, if we knew that we wanted to sort of make a push and, and go on a run and, and close the season out strong, it really needed to start today against a team that, that he said, you know, this team also needed a win against a good team. And it's no disrespect, obviously, to the Jets and the Jags, but we know what their records are. But it didn't get done today. I think defensively, you saw positives, you saw flashes of positives, but offensively, it just never Never really seems like that unit was in sync throughout the entire game. And, and I don't know if it's a combination of getting a guy like Austin back and sort of working him in, which then takes touches away from Keenan or whatever it might be, who knows, but it, it just never really fully felt like they were fully in sync, but to the defense's credit, they at least made plays when it needed to happen. But then the offense also couldn't capitalize on those when they needed to. You're right. Before the game, I was excited to see what Austin was going to look like with this offense, but it's just natural for this to take a little bit of time to, totally. to get Austin implemented into this <laughs> offense. But he did have 25 touches today, 85 yeah. yards receiving. He, he led the team in receiving, uh, led the team in rushing with 44. Chargers just 76 rushing yards today. Uh, but it's going to take time. Brian Bulaga, mm -hmm. who we expected to play today at right tackle, did not play. Uh, I think he was ill before the game and just couldn't give it a go today. So, you know, you're, you're without your right tackle. Uh, Bill score first. Chargers respond, miss the extra point. Uh, a couple of 15-yard penalties in that first yeah. half. Um, it seems like whenever something positive happens, you have a, a negative play, kind of negates the positive, and you're, you're consistently kind of behind the eight ball. Um, that, that fourth quarter, you mentioned just a flurry of turnovers, four turnovers in that fourth quarter, uh, three by the Bills, and right when you're expecting the – okay, Chargers get some defensive turnovers. We've been looking for mm -hmm. that all year long. Uh, you couldn't really capitalize on it, uh, another reason why you lose. Yeah, I think they ended up only getting three points off of three turnovers – I want to say, That's I believe enough. that was, it's not enough. And, and we talk about it all the time. We do our game previews. We, we talk about what's on the menu every week. And a lot of it throughout this whole season has come down to forcing turnovers, capitalizing on those tur turnovers and also playing clean football, limiting penalties. That first half, I believe it was three penalties for 77 yards. That's huge. That's yeah. a ton. And I believe there were two massive ones on one of those bills drives, but it just felt like they were out of sync today. And, and to your point, this is a team that in week, what are we, 12 right now, yeah. is totally different, I think, than anyone anticipated it was going to be before the season. Look, the quarterback is different. Things have, guys have gotten injured. Things are very, very, very different and strange. And, and there were some guys who came back today, like Austin Eckler, Chris Harris Jr., but it is a work in progress. It is a work in progress of getting all the pieces together to try to get everyone on the right page. And it's just tough that, that the games that they did lose happen, you know, at points where it's almost too hard to recover, excuse me, recover from at this point when you have five games left, but it's, it's difficult. I mean, they talk a lot about execution and there wasn't a lot of execution on offense that, that happened today. You're excited to get guys like Eckler back and Chris Harris Jr. back. But if we're being completely honest, the, the playoff train kind of passed these guys a few weeks ago. So it, yeah. it'd be one thing if you were stacking wins right now and you're like, all right, Chris Harris is coming back. Austin Eckler's mm -hmm. coming back. We can really make a playoff push. I Don't get me wrong. I think the mentality was let's beat a good team on the road and maybe start to stack some bricks here and see what happens. But you look at the, the landscape of the AFC, uh, the, the playoffs were extremely unlikely going into this game. And obviously yeah. you see the result, you drop to three and eight. You try to find some positives out of this, Haley. I mean, Joey Bosa the last two weeks uh, playing like a man possessed. He was a one man mm -hmm. wrecking crew in the first half. Gets three sacks on the day. His third sack comes in the second half and he passes Junior Seau for fifth all time in sacks in Chargers history. Just a, a remarkable game for Bosa. I think two weeks ago, he 
had his media availability. He had a presser and he didn't necessarily call guys out by name, but he talked about just how important it is to make plays when plays come your way. You saw that with the fumble recovery today. He pounced on it. He made that play. And to not really let opportunities pass them by. And, and he said it was so hard to sit and watch through a couple of those games because he knew he couldn't be out there and, and he wanted to see that effort. Rich Gannon said something on the broadcast that sort of cup, is coupled, I, I couple with that, where he said every play is important to him. And you can certainly, certainly see that. Perfect there is safe. no one, almost in the league, there are very few players that that this game means so much to to everyone, obviously. But, but when Joey Bosa is out on that field and is having a game like he had today, without Melvin Ingram on the field, you can just tell that, that it just means so much. And despite the team's record, and, and he has been in this position before, he has had seasons that have gone this way before, pretty much since he came into the league. But again, even in 2016, I believe they finished four and 12. He was defensive rookie of the year. It just goes to show you that he will always show up. He will always be there every Sunday that he's available. And he talked about today where they need to kind of go from here. And he said a lot of it starts with himself, just being able to be that leader, to now have that maturity to know, hey, I can't get really frustrated. I can't get bogged down because those other guys around me are going to see it. And that just says a lot about who he is He's always kind of been this way, obviously, but he really is now coming to his own. And I just think he is so special. And and today was just another game that's truly indicative of of the type of player and and also person that he is. He's really embraced, I I think, this leadership role, getting the new deal. I I really think he is kind of coming to his own as as one of the undisputed leaders on this team. And it doesn't have to be vocal it really is right. by example and, and I think when you see the effort and the tenacity that he plays with on every single play uh, the guy next to you you can't help but look at that and be like you know what I better be on my a game every single day of practice and for the next five games moving forward I asked him about that in the presser and you know it, it's one of those things where he said you have to play for the guy next to you now yeah. I mean like if, if you take a play off if you take a week off you take a game off you're putting your guy next to you uh, in, in harm's way, you know, mm-hmm. you're doing him a disservice. So I, I just, I, I think the chargers having having a guy like Joey Bosa on this football team and he's what, 25 years old. It's, it's, yeah. So young. It's hard to believe just how much good football he has in front of him. It's tough seeing this team at three and eight right now though. Oh, it's absolutely tough. And, and like I said, it's sort of tough just all around because there was so much optimism going into this year. And even after Tyrod Taylor got hurt and you had the switch to Justin Herbert, there was still that optimism, even though they were losing some games because you saw that, okay, he's the future of this franchise. He's the guy, this team's okay. It's in good hands, but it, it is just tough when here we are at three and eight and it's not what anyone really expected. It, it's tough. And, and it is coming down, you know, it's coming down to a couple little things. Like someone asked, you know, Joey moving forward, what needs to happen? And he said, you know, defensively, it's cleaning up penalties. It's tackling better. It's little things. I think that, that they're not totally far off. You've seen flashes of brilliance from Keenan Allen all season. His rapport with Justin Herbert is great and all of that but it's it's just kind of cleaning up little things and getting everyone on the same page and and like I kind of said last week and and you had mentioned you know where this team is kind of where they go from here it is hard when you get guys back and you don't get the win and and maybe it doesn't come together the way that you think it's going to but they do have some, you know, games left to sort of figure out. Maybe they do get other guys back and, and sort of figure out what this team looks like when these guys are all t- together and then cleaning some other stuff up. But it's a bummer. And and Buffalo's a very good football team. I mean, they're eight and three now. No they're doubt. no doubt. And and it did feel in that fourth quarter like they were sort of breaking down a little bit. And and it was just unfortunate though, that the Chargers couldn't capitalize on some of those mistakes that they made. And then ultimately they ended up going up two scores and it was just too much to overcome towards the end. Five games remain. The Patriots next week who won, beat the Cardinals, I think uh, last second yes. today in, in Foxborough. Then you see the Atlanta Falcons who crushed the Raiders today. Put a whooping on them. Wow. I don't know yeah. if anybody was expecting that, but that happened. And then you got the Raiders in a few yep. weeks on a Thursday night, uh, closing it out with uh, the AFC West Raiders, Broncos, 
and cheap. So it gets no easier. And I think it's just more incentive for these guys to really play this out uh, 110%. I mean, th this is something where you are looking into 2021. You're, you're saying, what is this team going to look like? You want to build around Justin Herbert. You want to make him mm -hmm. comfortable. You want to get him some confidence, get him some wins to close out this season as we all kind of look forward to 2021 and, and what that could look like. Yeah. And then you mentioned guys like Joey, who we know he's not a super vocal guy at all, but those guys who will take it upon themselves to lead by example and be there for the other guys. A lot of those younger guys too, who are now in this locker room, even though, like we said, Joey's 25 and he's a baby in this yeah. league, but, but there are a lot of guys who are younger than him, but, but yeah, it, it comes down now to, to playing for pride as, as guys always say, playing for the names on the backs of their jerseys and hopefully to your point, getting some wins and just kind of building that confidence and, and getting guys on the same page and, and working together and hopefully executing better to just give them the confidence that they can then push forward. Closing out with three divisional games, especially that Thursday night one against the Raiders, that's huge because you're still over in division. So if you can at least split or come out with one or something like yeah. that at least that would help because it's been so long they haven't won in division since 2018 and just to get that confidence because as we know the easiest way to the playoffs is winning your division unfortunately for the chargers you have a team like the kansas city chiefs who are in your division and are set up for a very very long time with the guy under center there but you know just maybe get some wins, just try to build that confidence. And, and maybe one of those wins or two of those wins could hopefully come in division just to get that confidence back of, of being able to sort of handle your business in division. Yeah, I agree with you. You know, the most important game is that cliche is the one uh, that's yep. the next one, but mm -hmm. the next, the last three games of the season are AFC West games. I, I think that those three games are just crucial. It, to yeah. Try to get a couple of wins there and, and get some confidence inside the division. You, you build to win in the division. I think having a guy like Justin Herbert, when you see Patrick Mahomes going to be in this division for the next decade plus, to have a guy like Herbert, that, that's a very encouraging sign. Uh, you want to see some of these pieces on defense continue to develop around guys like Joey Bosa and Darwin James when he eventually comes back in 2021. Uh, but that's kind of where the Chargers are right now. Haley, we, we close the chapter on November. We go into December, uh, hoping that this team can – close this tough year on a lot of different levels on a little bit of a high note. Yeah. And we'll see, you know, like we always say, like you said, the cliche is to go, you know, week by week, but you and I, we always look ahead because we can. <laughs> We're allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> We're allowed to. We're not on the field. Thank thankfully we are yeah. not out there, but, but we can look ahead and yeah, go into December that first week in January, obviously week 17, see what you see, what you can get, see what this team is made of. But hearing from someone like Joey Bosa, you know, it, it's refreshing to hear that there are guys on this team that despite the record, they are still playing and they are still playing extremely hard and they are going to rally the guys around them to do the same. Guys, we know it's frustrating. We feel you. Uh, we appreciate you sticking with us, sticking around on the final drive presented by Microsoft Surface. Haley, we'll get back at it this week, week 13. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Thanks, guys.